Hi, I'm Amanda Morrell, Personal Finance Editor with Interest.co.nz, and I'm here today with a double shot interview with Fiona White, who is here to talk about a, uh, a subject most of us dread, and that's tax debt. So I was feeling a bit out of sorts about my own personal situation until I saw this statistic. Between 200 and 300,000 New Zealanders are in arrears with their taxes. Get this, the total amount of debt owed, more than $4 billion. So that was a bit of an outdated statistic, I think, from uh, 2008. Fiona, are these numbers anywhere near accurate? Absolutely. The Auditor General um, published that report in June 2009, and the stats, as you say, were from June 2008. So we're three years down the track. Anecdotal e evidence suggests it could be double that. Double? Oh, could my be. goodness. So yeah. who owes all this debt? debt? All sorts of different people from different walks in life. Um, sometimes it's individuals, sometimes it's small, medium businesses for a variety of reasons. Um, and there's no one typical situation. So I, I'm guessing that small business owners may owe a, a, bit, a fair chunk of this. Sure. I think a lot of it revolves around um, personal directors and income tax or provisional tax payments, that sort of thing. That certainly takes up a huge chunk of it. Okay. So where do most people go wrong? How do they end up in this... Well, yeah, a variety of reasons again. Um, sometimes it's as simple as a lack of cash flow planning. Um, mm -hmm. One of the simple rules is putting 20% aside, for example, in an account so that you know that that's the tax money, don't touch it, it's there to pay the bills. But we are in a recession and cash flow is incredibly tight and so people tend to just um, forget about paying the IRD, or well, not forget, forget, but just go, oh, I'm sure the money will be there when I need it to be there mm -hmm. and I've got to pay these other people first. Well. That's pretty much how it comes to pass. I guess it's easy to uh, forget about our own debt, but I can't imagine the government's going to forget about $8 billion. <laughs> well, yeah, the dollar value. It's hard to know what the actual... But you're right, they need that money in. We've had the Christchurch earthquake since then. I recently blogged about students overseas saying, hey, it would be good to start paying your student loan back to be patriotic and help the government out, because they certainly need some cash in the coffers right now. Yeah, I don't think they're going to be letting us off lately, at least, well, not me. So where do people, um, where does a tax debt broker fit into this equation? What do you actually do? Okay, good question. We sit in the middle of the arrangement and we work out a solution with the IRD, with the client, help work through it with their accountant as well. So we kind of, if you think of it like of a bicycle wheel, we're the hub in the middle, bringing everybody together, because we all want the same thing. We want the situation resolved. And, you know, the IRD want a compliant taxpayer and they want their money back too. So it's working out what's the best situation we can make of this. So what's the advantage of having a tax debt broker intervene on your behalf? Can, you, can most people not manage this for themselves? Well, as you can appreciate, it's an incredibly stressful situation. And while you might be in a rational mind thinking, yes, I can logistically handle this, when they see the numbers and they perhaps get on the phone, it's very emotional and it can be quite daunting and difficult. So having someone that can walk alongside and hold their hand actually makes that process easier because if they're upset or anxious, they can deal with that through us as an intermediary and then we'll help work through that situation within Land Revenue. Okay. And so who actually needs a tax debt broker? Who, is it a certain threshold at which you may call somebody into? Sure. If you've got debt over 10,000 Kiwi, then that's really the level where we'll start looking at seeing where we can help you. Yeah, and um, to what extent are you able to sort of offset that <laughs> that level of Does it make <laughs> yes. success? Yeah, absolutely make success. Yeah. We'll certainly look to um, to try and help out, and we, we need to get you know whatever money is there to, to bring that resolution for IAD, and then also if there's some debt that gets written off, there's sometimes debt writ is written off too. Okay, so I'm sure you've seen enough cases uh, to know where uh, see some common mistakes that people are making. What would those be? Um, yeah, as we kind of alluded to before, it's, it's the first thing of perhaps not filing the returns and paying the taxes that are, that are due, um, and just a simple lack of that cash flow planning really is, is where it all comes down to, and I know it's easy for people to sort of look at it and say, well, you know, I've got this many bills and this many suppliers I need to pay and I have to keep mm. my business going and I need to make that sale, and so therefore I'll get some more stock on board, and yeah, like we said, perhaps by the time the 28th of the month comes and the GST's there, the money should be back in the account. Mm. You can't just cross your fingers. No, and how about the sort of let sleeping dogs lie approach to oh, tax? Absolutely, debt. they do. They sort of let it go and think, oh, well, the IRD's not knocking on my door, and so I don't actually have to deal with it. Well, they might be knocking on your accountant's door, and maybe your accountant 
hasn't been passing it on or um, you think your accountant's dealing with it and it may not be happening. So just because you think that something's happening or you don't have to do anything may not be right, check it out. Mm. Don't let that sleeping dog lie because when he wakes up, it's going to be a Rottweiler. <laughs> not a puppy, I've not discovered. A puppy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any other tax tips uh, you would have for us in this regard? Yeah, um, certainly be current. You know, like if you've got a situation at the moment that you think is out of control, you know, that next GST payment's due at the end of October, make sure you pay that. Look at what the provisional tax is due for the 15th of January. Start setting aside some money. Start talking to your accountant. Um, you can get registered on the IRD website online and then find out exactly what your personal situation is if you're unsure. There is actually a lot of good information on their website too. Um, and then also there's free workshops that they run in terms of an introduction to business. So certainly, even if you've been in business for three to five years and you wonder how on earth could that help me, I know what I'm doing, well maybe there's a few tips that you could find and I know people have been and really enjoyed them. Yeah, okay, so it's not completely insurmountable. This not at all, topic. not at all. Okay. All right, Fiona White, thank you very much for joining us. Fiona is a specialist with tax debt brokers. I'm Amanda Morrell, personal finance editor with interest.co.nz.